is called Calvary, and that person is called Jesus. Revelation chapter 20, beginning at verse 7. The Bible says, Now when the thousand years had expired, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth. Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, whose number is of the sands of the sea. And they went on the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. The devil who deceived them was cast into a lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophets are. And they will be tormented day and night forever and forever. For the last several Sunday mornings, we've been preaching a series of messages on the judgment of the seven major judgments of the Bible. So far, we have dealt with, number one, the judgment of sin. And for the believer, sin was dealt with on an old rugged cross 2,000 years ago. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have been to the cross and asked the Lord to forgive you of your sins, your sins have been judged. God takes our sins and casts them as far as the east is from the west. The second judgment that we looked at in our Bible is the judgment of self. The Bible says that we are to take stock, inventory of our life every single day and allow the Lord to take His divine spotlight and walk up and down the halls of our heart. And if there's anything that's not pleasing to God on a daily basis, then we must get before God and have it dealt with. Because the Bible says if we don't deal with it, God will. The third judgment that we had to talked about was the judgment of the judgment seat of Christ. That's the judgment where every child of God one day will stand before God and give an account of their life from the moment they got saved until they cross the finish line and go into glory. We will give an account as to what we've done with our talents, time, and treasure. Have we been a good steward with what God has blessed us with? Have we had an open hand? so that God can not only put in what He wants, but take out to bless others? Or have we have a clenched hand, and greed has filled our heart? The fourth judgment that we dealt with is the judgment of Israel. One day there's coming a final judgment on Israel. And the Bible says that once they are judged, then they will be able to enter into the millennium. Then the Bible says not only will the nation of Israel, God's chosen people, be judged. By the way, if God would judge His own people, do you not think He will judge us one day as well? Then the Bible says that God will one day gather all the nations of the world before Him. And God will judge the nations as to how they have dealt with Him and treated the nation of Israel. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a good thing that America is friends with Israel. It's good that we are her ally. Because God says, those that bless you I will bless, and those that curse you I will curse. The sixth judgment that we dealt with is the judgment of fallen angels and Satan. Now normally some people would preach this particular judgment together. But with the amount of material that I felt like we needed to deal with, I broke it down into two sermons. One judgment, two sermons. We've already dealt with the judgment of fallen angels, and Lord willing, today we're going to deal with the judgment of Satan. 
What does the Bible tell us about Satan? First of all, the Bible tells us about his fall. What is his origin? Where did he come from? In fact, it's been asked, where in the devil did the devil come from? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you this morning that Lucifer was created by God as a good angel and his name was called Lucifer and the word Lucifer means son of the morning or light bearer. You see, in his creation, he was the highest of the order of the cherubims. When you study the Bible, you will find that there's two classes of angels. There's the cherubim and the seraphim. The cherubim angels are the highest. They rank in the highest of order. So he was the anointed one. He was the perfect one. As Ezekiel puts it in Ezekiel 28 and verse 14, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of the fire. You see, ladies and gentlemen, when God created Lucifer, he did not create a monster. No more than he created man a sinner. Believe it or not, mankind has a choice, and so does angels. God gave us a choice, and man chose in the Garden of Eden to disobey God, and when he did, he plunged the whole human race into sin and was cast out of the garden. The same thing kind of happened to Lucifer. He was the highest of angels. In fact, he was probably head over the cherub angels in, the, in, 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 the, in heaven. But one day he chose to allow sin to come into his heart and because of that he fell and was cast out of heaven to the ground. A study of the word of God will find that probably it was the pride of Satan that caused him to become a monster. So we see the origin of his fall. Secondly, notice the operation of his fall. What is it that Satan's up to? What is he trying to do these days? Well, believe it or not, at one time, Satan is called by God the anointed cherub and the old covering cherub. Again, the cherub was created for a specific ministry. They were to speak of God's presence, God's glory, God's holiness, and God's sovereignty. And they were to be around the throne of God. As the anointed cherub, he covered God's throne. That is, he had the assignment of guarding God's throne. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine a, an assignment like that to really, in a way, be almost God's right-hand man in the realm of angels? And yet, ladies and gentlemen, it seems from every indication of Scripture that he had authority over God's created earth. I mean, he was up there in rank. It was his dominion and his place, the earth was, of his operation. So what happened? Notice the overthrow. The Scripture is plain in declaring that Lucifer fell from his once lawfully and high position. Listen to Ezekiel in his description of Lucifer. Thou was perfect in thy ways from that day and was created till iniquity was found in thee. Again, ladies and gentlemen, God did not create him the devil. God created him a good angel. Lucifer. But through his own deceit and conniving, the Bible says he became an evil angel by his choice, just like man fell in the garden. Really, without explaining what exactly happened, God said, iniquity was found in you. The only clue that you and I have is that his beauty caused his heart to be lifted up in pride and his brightness brought about his corruption. 
So because of pride, Satan fell. Friend, that would be a warning to every single one of us here today. You see, lest we permit pride to overtake us and we fall like Satan, we've got to be careful. In fact, the Bible says in Proverbs 16 and verse 18, pride, pride goeth before destruction and in a haughty spirit before the fall. Isaiah also speaks of Lucifer's fall. It says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. And ladies and gentlemen, when that happened in his heart, Lucifer became Satan by his own choice when he tried to make himself as one above God. Let me just say today, there is nothing and no one above God. God is the potentate. There is no greater, higher power than God and never will be. So we see his fall. Secondly, this morning, I want you to see his features. What is he like? Is he real? Well, he is real, my friend. We must understand that Satan is real. He is a real being. Now, he doesn't wear a red, fiery-looking suit and walk around with a pitchfork. No, his, his existence is evident throughout Scripture. Jesus himself believed that there was a real devil. Not only that, but through the saints of God, as Satan attacked them over and over throughout the Word of God, they knew that Satan was real. And if you've ever been walking with God very long, friend, you know Satan is real too. When Christ dealt with him, it was a real being, not some figment of the imagination. The Apostle Paul thought of an encounter with Satan as a real being and warned the saints of God against the wiles of the devil. In fact, Paul in Ephesians instructs the child of God to put on the armor of God that we would be able to withstand the wiles of the devil. So we see his reality, friend. Satan is real. But what about his personality? Not only his reality, but his personality. What is he like? Well, being real, he has feelings, emotion, intellect, and a will. You see, he was not made to rebel, but he chose to be a rebel. And that's what he does. That is what he wills to do. His personality is always evil. Always. The Bible offers no suggestion or evidence anywhere in the Bible that Satan is merciful, good, loving, kind, gentle, or patient. Let me just tell you, friend, the devil is not your friend. From the moment of his fall, he has worked to destroy the power of God, the plan of God, and the people of God. His personality can be seen in various names attributed to him throughout the Bible. Number one, he is called the prince of this world. Number two, he is called the prince of of the power of the air. Number three, in Matthew, he is known as the prince of demons. Number four, he is known as a devourer, a destroyer, and a deceiver. Number five, he is the accuser of the brethren. He's an adversary and a tempter of God's people. Number six, he is the enemy and the evil one. That is what he has become as a rebel. 
Yet, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, there are those who would tell us that they cannot find a real devil in the Bible. Well, I don't know what kind of Bible they're reading, but I just want to tell you this morning that if you read your Bible and you don't see God in your Bible and you don't see Jesus in your Bible and you don't see a real devil in your Bible, you need to get a different copy. Because all three of them are real. What about his authority? What kind of authority, power does he have? Well, don't ever think that he has all power. He has awesome power, but he don't have all power. His power is limited. It's not omnipotent like God. In fact, we find that in the story of Job. We see that God permitted Satan to take everything that Job had, but he could not take his life. The scripture teaches us that he has power to harass the people of God to hinder the people of God, and to hurt the saints of God. Number two, he has power to promote discord among the people of God and persecute the saints, preventing them to achieving the will of God for their life. Number three, he has power to tempt the saints, but he cannot, listen, make them sin. The old excuse that we've heard all of our life, the devil made me do it, won't work. You see, ladies and gentlemen, the devil has never made anybody do anything. All he can do is tempt you, and then you choose out of your own volition, out of your own choice, as to whether or not you will appropriate the power of God to deliver you and give you the victory or to thwart the power of God that is there, ready and available in your life, and fall under the weight of that temptation. Now, he does not have the power to make us evil or to do evil. He can only tempt us. All he can do is dangle the bait out there, so to speak. And I want to tell you, he's got some pretty doggone good lures. Many of you, like myself, like to fish when you can. And you realize that certain baits work for certain fish. I want to tell you that the devil knows every one of our weaknesses. And he knows exactly what to do and the exact bait to try on us to see if we will fall. So when we sin, it's our choice. It's our own volition. But thank God the Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. Satan has authority over the fallen angels. They are at his command and he controls them. He rules the air because the Bible says he is the prince of the power of the air. But I thank God his authority is not unlimited, but God's is. We see his fall. We see his features. I really like this one. We see his finish. One of these days, thank God, the devil that has destroyed so many churches, so many individual lives, so many families, One of these days, thank God, he's going to get what's coming to him, and I can't wait. Because you, like myself, have seen the suffering and the heartache and the pain that the devil causes in so many people's lives. Thank God, one of these days, he's going to be finished. You see, we need to understand that Satan is a defeated foe. He was defeated at Calvary. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, he conquered death, hell, and the grave. We claim that victory today on the basis of the cross. You see, I'm no match to the devil. You're no match to the devil. But when we claim the precious blood of Jesus Christ, ladies and gentlemen, that will do it every time. 
God's judgment one of these days, according to the Bible, will fall upon Satan. His finish, his judgment was promised way back in the book of Genesis. The Bible promises that one day ultimate destruction would come to Satan through the seed of a woman. One day Mary gave birth to a child, but not just any child. It was the son of the living God. And Jesus Christ went to the cross and he conquered and defeated him. Death, hell, and the grave. And Jesus Christ rules supremely. So question, where is he going? Where is the devil going in his judgment? The Bible tells us here in verse number 10. The place he's going according to verse number 10, one day he will no longer be free to persecute, to possess people, to punish people. But one day the Bible says that he will be confined to a lake of fire. Notice what it says here in verse 10. The devil who deceived them was cast into a lake of fire and brimstone. Ladies and gentlemen, that's where he's going one day. What kind of punishment would he get? Again, in verse number 10, the Bible says, notice it now, and shall be tormented day and night. The same suffering, the same torment that he's put so many people through, one day, ladies and gentlemen, will come to him. I'll never forget my grandmother telling me so many times, what goes around comes around. That is so true for the devil. He has been sowing his confusion across our earth for all of these years, but thank God one of these days he's going to get what's coming to him. Just as he tormented the saints of God, he himself, the Bible says, will be tormented in a lake of fire and I want to tell you there, he will suffer pain and toil and torment day and night. But not only do we see the place he's going and the punishment that he will get, but what about the permanency of that place? You see, ladies and gentlemen, when God ultimately deals with him, the devil will not be around to harm us anymore. Again, in verse number 10, the Bible says, and he shall be tormented day and night. Notice these little words, forever and forever. Praise God. That one of these days he will be put somewhere where he will no longer be able to hurt so many lives. The Bible says in that place it will never end. He will be tormented day and night. No let up, no relief, no alleviation, no abatement. He will be there forever. That's the judgment of Satan. You say, well, that's pretty good, the, the judgment of Satan, but what about me? Friend, if you're a child of God, as I said earlier, one of these days, you're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Every single one of us will be judged. If you've not sa been saved and you don't stand at the judgment seat of Christ, then if you die in your sins and are lost, you're going to stand before what we will deal with the next time, Lord willing, the great white throne. Now think about it. Everybody's going to be judged except the good angels. Think about it. Every Christian will one day be judged. Every lost people will one day be judged. The nation of Israel, God's own chosen people, one day will be judged. All the nations of the world one day will be judged. The fallen angels will one day be judged. And Satan himself one day will be judged. Let me bring it home. One day we will be judged. 